Everybody tryna go, yeah, the party jumping off And we putting on a show, tryna catch a vibe We do this every time, like, na 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 Feeling like I'm on the highway Cause everything been going my way And now they looking at me sideways I'm like, na 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 Welcome to my home office tour. Ever since I became a full-time artist and started working from home, I have been obsessed with home workstation builds and I always dreamt of having my own space that I was proud of and could call my own. Really, this space as it is today is just the culmination of four to five years of building and rebuilding my workstation. I started my business off my high school laptop on the kitchen table of my parents' place almost six years ago and now here I am today. So before I get into all of this, let me preface this by saying that everything I have as it is today was not gathered all at once. So don't be intimidated if your work from home setup is still stationed at the kitchen table. I started there and now I'm here. It just takes time. And before I dive into the video, if you could do me a favor and subscribe and like for the YouTube algorithm, it would be much appreciated. Moving on to the workhorse powering this entire build is my NZXT Creator PC. I recently switched from running this setup entirely off a 2019 Mac spec MacBook Pro, which has served me well since then. But then after transitioning to more of a full-time digital artist rather than photographer and filmmaker over the last 18 months, I knew I needed more power for my workflow. This is about to be one hell of a mouthful, but bear with me. This build has an Intel Core i9-11900K CPU, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 30 3090 GPU, a Z590 Aurorus Elite motherboard, and runs with 64 gigabytes of Kingston KF3200C DDR4 RAM. So it's a bit of a weapon when it comes to 3D rendering and video editing, which is perfect for what I need. It's also, for better or for worse, depending on how you look at it, brought me back into the world of gaming. I haven't owned a console for almost eight years now. So when I got this PC, I also went and picked up a new Xbox Series X controller. And I've really enjoyed now being able to unwind every couple of days with a few laps around Albert Park in Max Verstappen's 2021 Red Bull. In saying that though, I still use my MacBook Pro for some tasks and for portability when I'm on the road. This particular MacBook is a 2019 15 inch with an upgraded 2.4 gigahertz 8 core Intel i9 processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM and a Radeon Pro Vega graphics card. It's an absolute workhorse when it comes to video and photo editing, making it the perfect replacement when I'm on the road and quite overkill when it comes to day-to-day -day tasks. The two monitors I have for this setup are the Samsung LF32TU870VEXXY 32-inch 4K UHD VA monitor on the left and the Samsung U32R590 32-inch 4K UHD curved monitor on the right. Holy hell, Samsung, you need to shorten these names. <laughs> these two monitors have been great for what I need, and although the color accuracy is a little off, I have been able to manually tweak the colors to get it closer to a more accurate color profile. So if you're a colorist or designer, I probably wouldn't recommend these monitors, but if you're a digital artist and filmmaker like myself, these are great. Sitting underneath these monitors, I have the Grovemade desk shelf and Grovemade Merino wool desk mat in the XL option. I think these two elements really help to round out the space and create a nice, clean and modern look. Plus the quality of Grovemade's products really is something to marvel at. And for that reason alone, I'd recommend adding their products to your space. The desk mat also helps protect the desk from any dints and scratches, which is a nice added bonus. Sitting on top of the desk mat is my new IQNix F96 Coral C mechanical keyboard with cherry brown switches. After switching to PC, I also got sucked down the rabbit hole of mechanical keyboards and decided to pick up this beautifully designed keyboard from my Cunix. Now it certainly took some getting used to after coming from my MacBook Pro's butterfly keyboard, but after a few months of use, I honestly don't know how I'd ever go back to typing without it. The cherry brown switches were a great introduction to mechanical keyboards too. They're perfect for those wanting that tactile and clicky mechanical keyboard experience without being too loud for those you may be sharing the space with. I've found them to be the perfect amount of clickiness to be satisfying without being too obnoxious. Next to my keyboard is the Logitech MX Master 3 mouse, which has been an absolute pleasure to use. It fits perfectly into my hand, which is often a bit of a struggle as I have quite large hands and the functionality of the button layout makes it incredibly intuitive 
within each of the programs I use and the perfect productivity tool. Having the ability to customize a button and wheel functionality independently within each program I use has also made it a great addition to my workspace. As for audio for this setup, I live with a roommate, so I've never really seen the opportunity to use desktop speakers in my setup. So instead, I opted for a pair of Audio-Technica M40X headphones, which are great for monitoring as they provide a very flat, unaltered audio experience. This gives you the most realistic results with editing for podcasts and videos, and over time I've actually come to enjoy this flat audio profile more so than say the audio that comes from my wireless Microsoft Surface headphones, which are great for when I want a wireless noise cancelling experience. My M40Xs run through my Focusrite 2i2 audio interface, which is responsible for transferring the signal from my microphone of choice, the Shure SM7B, to my PC. I purchased this microphone for my podcast as it provides the best voiceover audio on the market and is an incredibly popular choice amongst podcasters. This microphone however produces a very low output so in order to increase the gain without introducing too much noise I run it through a cloud lifter which provides an additional 25 decibels of clean gain creating the crisp audio you're listening to right now. I use this setup for podcast recordings, YouTube videos, and to occasionally flex on Zoom meetings. Moving on to the thing supporting this entire setup, the desk itself, I have the OmniDesk Pro Wildwood standing desk in the XL Acacia Wood option. The lovely people at the OmniDesk were kind enough to send this over to me, and I am absolutely in love with it. I have tried a few standing desks over the years and have never really been all that satisfied with them. I always found them to be too unstable in the standing position to really get any use out of them, meaning I would rarely ever use it standing anyway. To be completely honest with you, before the OmniDesk reached out, I was just about ready to throw out my last pair of electronic standing legs and move back to a normal desk. So to say that I was a little skeptical when I received this desk is a massive understatement. But I've been absolutely blown away by it. The legs are solid as a rock, even in the standing position, which for me, considering the fact that I stand at 193 centimeters tall, or six foot three for you American viewers, is no small feat for a sit-stand desk. And I think out of everything you should look for in a desk, stability in my experience is the most important thing. So I've been very, very impressed in that regard. And they haven't sacrificed on size either. The desk is a whopping 183 centimeters long and 76 centimeters deep, making it one of the largest largest standing desk setups on the market, and with it being a beautiful acacia wood tabletop, it was exactly what I wanted for my space and only added to the overall look and aesthetic. For me, having a big desktop is essential, as I find myself to be a bit of a messy scatterbrain worker. I like to have enough room for my journal to be open, my laptop to be one side of me, and all of that while supporting my PC and dual 32-inch monitor setup and any other random accessories I have sprawled across my desk. If you're interested, I'll have a link to this desk in the description. Lighting this setup and creating the general atmosphere is firstly the LifeX beam I have mounted behind my desk. This thing is incredibly bright and produces a nice amount of light without too much of that obnoxious RGB feel. Sorry gamers. Then mounted behind my monitors, I have two Philips Hue play bars, which create a nice amount of separation between my monitors and the wall behind, where I've added these foam audio panels, which to be completely honest with you, I've only really added because for now in this property, I can't paint the walls the satin black that I want to, and these provide at least a little bit of that look and feel that I'm after. Next to my desk, I then have this IKEA Hector standing lamp, which I find really matches the aesthetic of the space and provides some nice warm lighting in the evenings. Moving on to the plants that I have in this space, on the right side of my desk, I have my fiddle leaf fig, and on the left, I have my peace lily, which are probably two of my favorite additions to this room. Adding real plants to your space really is the easiest way to make it feel more warm and alive, and I really cannot recommend it enough. Obviously, it takes a little bit more work to keep these guys healthy, along with the other plants I have here in my office, but it's more than worth it. Two tips that I find have helped me be a better plant dad are to do all of my watering on one particular day of the week and to make sure I write down what each plant needs in order to thrive. Keeping real plants healthy is a bit of a learning curve, but not nearly as complicated as you might think. Just speak to your florist when you buy them, look for plants that do well indoors and in the sort of lighting conditions you'll have them in, and you should be fine. As for the art I have on the walls, I have this beautiful piece I collected from a local artist in Byron Bay. And then above my sofa, I have two cause prints, which I find add a nice, simple, but inspiring aesthetic to the space. And that's my office setup. I really hope you enjoyed this room tour. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And with all that said and done, I'll speak to you guys in the next one.